What is up, you guys? Welcome back to Twink Revolution. I'm Sam. And I'm Gian. <laughs> we're finally free. We're free of the Cheeto Batman fascist 45 drump. He's gone. <laughs> Yay. Yay. We did it, team. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> Fuck me. We haven't really talked about it yet, except for our sort of belligerent um, appearance on everyday analysis during the election where it seemed like Trump was going to win. I thought, I thought he had it in the bag, honestly. but then the mail in ballots kind of came in and then the lying media. Yeah. <laughs> the fraud. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it seems like Biden Harris are victorious. Yeah. It just seems he, he, he actually will like leave. I don't know. I kind of, I'm, I'm sort of, um, this, put this, way, this is the election I never wanted. I didn't want this to be the set of alternatives available to us. So now I think I'm just really writing it for entertainment value. And yeah. It's a little bit of an anticlimax if, if he just sort of like leaves. Yeah. Rides off into the sunset. <laughs> um, I think there needs to be a little more drama than that for me to kind of get my rocks off. Yeah, I think people, it'd be a little miss out of character if he just does nothing. Like, he needs to, like, at least, like, tweet about it and be like, I'm not leaving. This is fraud. Like, do something. Like, I know some of his protest supporters are, like, going to protest and say this election's fraud in the yeah. front of the White House. Which I think like, that's already happening. Yeah, I don't know. Um, the media has been jack silent on this shit. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, um, this election was, you know, <laughs> against an incumbent president who was already sort of, you know, call it controversial, um, against the drop backdrop of a, uh, you know, just an unprecedented global pandemic, the accompanying horrible economic effects on half of this country. Right. Um, and <laughs> the dream team, Joe Biden, Kamala Harris managed to just, just win, maybe. I what an inspiring <laughs> fucking victory. If they <laughs> if, if there wasn't COVID, I don't think they would have won. Absolutely not. I mean, it, it, and just like it. They won by technicality. It, like they won by like the. They won barely. The, like, I mean, like yeah. they won by the fact that like the world's in a horrible pandemic we haven't seen since like the 1920s, the like Spanish flu. It's like, oh, wow, you won. And. It wasn't by like a big margin. It was like yeah, I, I need to see what the current count is in the electoral college. Um, Two seventy nine is currently the cold things for Biden. Yeah, it's also not a blue wave. Um, no, it's it just literally it's like squeaked in over the finish line there. Well, I have some good stats because people really are fixating on the presidency because it's like one of the few wins the Democrats had. Um, the Senate possibly won up one seat for Democrats. The House lost possibly 11 seats and like state governors lost a Democratic governor. Like they did horribly. They did horribly this election. The only way they look good is because of the presidential election and the media won't even cover Trump's comments at all. Even though he's still the president until January. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think I tweeted words to that effect of the, the, the wall of silence and like, you know, I I I can't say I give a lot of credence to claims of widespread electoral fraud, although I do think it's funny that whenever Democrats win, they sort of just like forget that sort of suppression and fraud are are real things that happen in American elections. Yeah. More suppression than maybe out and out ballot stuffing. But both have have happened. Yeah. Um and um to the extent that the, you know, CNN was just running a giant you know, we projected the win for Biden. That's the news. So the news, the news item was that they, their newsroom had project, projected a win. Mm -hmm. Great. Cool. Jerking off into your own mouth. And then, um, they did not cover anything about Trump's response to it. The, the both, you know, the opposition and the sitting president, we, it was, it was very difficult to discern from say CNN. What, what was it that the the sitting president was saying about this electoral victory or loss? 
Well, on Twitter, they were censoring all of his tweets, which isn't surprising knowing that Silicon Valley is backing the Joe Biden campaign. But also, like, the only articles that really came out about Trump were, oh, he hasn't been seen in 72 hours, or Melania is going to divorce him after yes. this. All these fans, which are like, there's no basis to it. Just a bunch of, like, dumb shit to make him seem like a giant baby. When, like, I think there is problematic things. I mean, American elections have always been problematic. People are like, we don't have any issues in American elections ever. It's like, <laughs> we've always had tons of things. They're maybe better than... <laughs> like the machine Democrat days where they elected dead people. But there's clearly was some things that seems a little sketch on both sides. I think both sides probably use certain things to their advantage to give them power. I mean, the Democrats pretend they're like, oh, we don't try and overthrow elections. They're doing it to one of their own recently right now. What's his name? Um, Oh, I don't remember his name. Okay, he's the like 19 year old who's like a Bernie Krat and... When he was like middle school or did some revenge did some porn or something like that. Revenge porn where he shared some girls' nudes. He was also like a middle schooler and like he apologized and all of that, but they're like, we're gonna over from because people voted Ron. It's like Well yeah, they're 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 it's, um It's a coup. <laughs> they're trying, yeah, they're well they're just trying not to seat him, basically. Yeah. These are the Democrats trying not to seat it as I guess another Democrat. Um Yeah. Uh yes, in Kansas, uh what's his name? Aaron Coleman. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, they don't want. To, they said he should not be seated, and a special election should be called due to his history of sending revenge porn, online harassment, and alleged physical abuse of ex girlfriend. Didn't stop Bill Clinton from getting elected. Hey. Um, <laughs> Who did far worse? <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I mean, it's it's um the the election is not you know it's not a good result. And it's not a bad result, and and the celebrating in the streets for the demise of the bad Cheeto Trump Hitler too. Yeah. Um. For one, definitely he's like super spreader events. Um, you're just that's like the COVID rates are gonna go through the fucking roof, and no, it's all Biden's fault for winning. COVID doesn't matter when it's um, things we like. Like this is the issue. Um, once Biden won, for one, they woke up at like seven o'clock in the morning to like blast like air horns and shit cow on bells. a Saturday. I got fucking, where are you all getting these cowbells? Those are for the cows. Not for, well, maybe they are cows. They're not like, for you. I've yeah. seen what they look like. <laughs> um, and there was people not like a lot of people were not wearing masks. They were not six feet apart. They were no. They were just having a full on fucking dance party in the Castro. Like these are the people who say, "I'm glad people in the red states die because they're dumb and stupid." And it's like yeah. you don't care. Like this is all, this whole election and the result reaction. This shows. All of this jargon of like we care about COVID and democracy is all bullshit. Like we it's all in science. It's all like fucking crap. And well, and that's where you start <laughs> to see where people become very skeptical, right? Of I'm skeptical. Um, no, me, me, me too. And I and I, I I say that in terms of like the sense people have that they are being lied to is what drives them into the hand of you know the the same libs are clutching their pearls about like QAnon conspiracies are dangerous and blah blah. It's like why do you think people find that shit so appealing? It's because you will look them straight dead in the fucking eye and tell them that, you know, Black Lives Matter protests and Biden-Harris victory party dance parties cannot spread COVID. Yeah. But Trump, Trump rallies can, right? Like, right. are you fucking kidding me? Like, the, the problem is you, you don't... This is not just hypocrisy. It's just simply, it's just lies. There was an uptick and when you start lying to Black people, Lives Matter. Yes, and yet everyone collectively has decided that's not a thing. Yeah. Which is not allowed to talk about that. Um, and so the, the problem is a righteous cause is enough to just override, it's just overriding ideology. And so what you end up with is the situation where people know they're being lied to and nobody, there, there is nobody telling them the truth. Also, no fucking wonder. <laughs> Good God, I'm ready to go fucking... <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm going full QAnon. <laughs> Fuck you. Fuck you all. Well, they're fine with all people dying and prolonging this horrible pandemic if it's for the righteous, like, HR event where it's like, oh, we're doing it for a woke cause. And they, they're the same people like... Corporate approved the ones, party. I'm, I, I'm glad all the old people are dying. Like, these are the same people. Yeah. Like... There was literally the tweet, which was like, aha, I bet Trump wished he had 245,000 old people alive this election. 
That's it's like horrible. Oh, you fucking monsters. Like people died alone without their families around them. It's like these people are considering like the woke things. They're the same ones who are like, oh, you're hypocritical around police. Well, I hope they tase you and beat the shit. I'm like, no, you do not do the same thing to people because they're wrong. You try to do better. It's like shoot. It's punching down versus like punching up. And this punching is punching me in the face, which is what I want somebody to do at this stage. There's also the trend of the week before election and like the week after any post that was critical of Biden. I've noticed at least of mine. I don't know about you. Um, got massive hate from people who I wasn't expecting it to. Where they're like do you want Trump to win? Or like, even after like, well, Trump also had a blood foreign policy. I'm like, yeah, I'm not fucking R word. Like I <laughs> talked about this the last four fucking years. Like I didn't ignore any of it. <laughs> the fact I'm critiquing the person who's going to be our president, who you're all like, Oh, it's so great. We're going to push him left. And he's going to be amazing. He's appointing like all like right wing, like Republican, like <laughs> shitheads offering a uh, <laughs> old mittens, Romney, uh, the um the house and Hu- health and human services uh cabinet post i believe is that that's been floated it's a who's who of like goldman sachs wells fargo and jp morgan like credit card executives i think lyft is also yeah yeah no it's just it's just the who's who of like everybody who has propelled joe biden through his ghoulish 50 year political climb yeah. his his climb over the dead bodies of fucking working class americans he he is the credit card guy. I mean, it's Delaware. Delaware is the state where like anything goes as long as you're a fucking bank. Right. And he's their guy and always has been. So it's just like this direct quid pro quo is happening in front of your eyes. And yet again, uh, the, the resentment people feel or, or the, the kind of the, the feigned credulity of like, I just don't know how people could believe these conspiracy theories. It's like, because every single media entity Every social media company has lined up to do it. Every fucking news media company has lined up to do it. And every fucking comfortable, affluent fucking lib in your life has all lined up to just say, no, it's not happening. This is good. Yeah, I was actually, I was personally, honestly, once you told me the news, I think you're the first one to tell me like, the results. I was a little upset about the results, not because I want Trump to be president i don't mean i don't want biden either but i was just kind of i had the assumption it would go one way because i didn't think enough people still had tolerance for the neoliberal like neocon order of biden and the fact he did when kind of upset me like and it's like people like oh you're being not you're you just want your problem like no i don't i want neither people but like i just I think I embrace the lesser, oh. lesser evil, sorry, lesser evil theory. Yeah. It's just like, I just assumed better and people clearly didn't. <laughs> well, and I, you know, I, I want to be, I guess, careful in clarifying my position here only because I think my ideal outcome yeah. would have been uh, Trump being reelected as president with a Democrat controlled Senate. Yeah. As just a sort of like stupid fucking gridlock. Mm-hmm. Um, but now we have this essentially like Republican controlled Senate probably um, barely possibly Republican controlled House although it's unclear maybe maybe slightly Democratic um, and you have Biden and Kamala hanging out uh, <laughs> in the White House um, so the only legislation that will pass is the stuff that Biden and the Republicans and some like small number of people who on the Democratic Party mm-hmm. agree on. Yeah. Which is always going to be like welfare, <laughs> welfare reform and wars. Yeah. So that's what's going to happen. One of their top contestants for their short list of candidates for Secretary of State is Susan Rice, who's an a-, a hardcore advocate for the Gaddafi regime change. She supported sanctions on everywhere from North Korea, um, Latin American countries, like African countries. She's just like, a, she's like a Hillary Clinton type. She's a horrible person who's probably 
worse on foreign policy than like Joe Biden. And the fact I keep potentially bringing people on who want records of like doing austerity around pensions and um, no doubt their education person is also going to do all the same shit that the lady did before um, about like charter schools and Betsy shit. Betsy DeVos. Yeah. yeah a lot of love charter schools. Like they're not going to stop any of this. Right. And, and the, the animating ideology of Biden forever has been, um, a kind of notion of like a poor, a, a deserving poor and an undeserving poor. Mm-hmm. And you see it through his sort of antipathy towards welfare in general. And then, uh, you know, enforcement of things like crime, you see it in his sort of public rhetoric around, notions of like ah predators on your streets um you know this sort of like it's always this notion of like well some people have earned our our little our little crumbs of help but some haven't and so (laughs) they can they can die in a fire and so the gleeful response to this man is um full mask off (laughs) i mean we knew we knew it was coming and that's the problem it was just an inevitability to the fact that all this yas slay queen nonsense was going to start up again. And we weren't surprised. We've been calling it out since day one because we're not blinded by this idea of like, he's going to just go left like Bernie and like Angela, like Davis or is going to tell us. And it's like, no, he's pointing an extremely right wing thing. And he's not going to fire these people. Like yeah. Trump kept firing all of like his neocon <laughs> state of secretaries. Biden's going to be like, oh, I'm going to fire you and put some even more radical because you don't want to like topple Maduro or topple <laughs> like Assad or whatever. Like, <laughs> Well, and, and yeah, so um, yeah, it's, it's going to be a, a just unrestrained neoliberal administration with as a, no, no checks or balances on it. Like who is it you think is going to say no to the kinds of just radical, radical reforms that they're going to want to do? The media is also going to hollow out the fucking working class. The media is also going to be like full on board and defending everything. They're, they're, right. they're already doing it. They're like, oh, we're going to have a dog in the White House again. And we're going to have this gay icon, Jill um, Biden. And she's like a teacher. And she's going to teach still. And it's like, fuck off. Like you're a bunch of psychopaths mm-hmm. full of like defenders of predators, mm-hmm. not just in like the sexual sense, but like in the global like destruction kind of way well kamala and joe <laughs> updating their twitter bios was front page news um you still could not find a single quote from anybody in the trump campaign about the electoral defeat in that story so there you go um also hopefully nobody nobody sort of believes this is a change in tone for us with our our perspective on joe biden and kamala harris because a lot of other people did a fucking about face and they're snakes and we will never talk to them again. Yeah. Um, all the people who in the lead up to basically election day, who's, um, you know, had been able to hide behind a certain ironic detachment or a kind of a let as the, their left bona fides and being all like, well, you know, ha ha Bernie, I was a Bernie person. Suddenly we're all just vote blue, no matter who motherfuckers. And like, just like, oh yes, I'm a I'm a committed Marxist. Now vote for the Democratic Party. They're also opinion policing now. Yeah, they're still doing it. You're not sufficiently enthusiastic about the win. And I've had some apologize, but I'm like, I shouldn't have to apologize for stating bad things about saying Trump was also bad. Like that's stupid. Like, fuck off. Um, and then people are. I mean, there was a positive aspect of elections i think it showed well it's over but there were wins for working class people in places that we're told are just progressive and they don't want progress like florida florida had 60 plus percent support a 15 dollar minimum wage and it passed that's more than either president got in florida which went for trump and i i know like when we're on the everyday analysis i think it was like Joanne <laughs> was like, it's a grab bag. It's not a grab bag. These people were voting always in their material interest. They don't want the free trade deals and like the like guest worker programs, which are like bad for everyone. Like they're not like nice programs. Um, and they don't want the broadly like intersectional austerity politics of the blues. Um, 
They want material change. They wanted the fifteen dollar minimum wage, just like people like I think in Oregon passed like um, universal child care. Like these people want and recreational uh, shrooms. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> get on them. Yeah. Um, yeah, and and that's the funny thing is to watch all the stupid fucking pretzel logic going on of the libs trying to understand like what? No, there there must they must have been confused, right? They must have accidentally ticked the wrong box in the ballot or wow, these people just don't know how to vote in their own interests. It's like it it gives me some warmth in my cold dead heart. Yeah. To see yes that actually it it, it does win out eventually that if you are simply analyzing it as, are these people voting in their own interests as far as they can see them? Mm-hmm. Yes. Given a very constrained set of alternatives, yes, they are. Yeah. Compared to like California, which is a massively blue state, um, they now made Uber and Lyft drivers not getting all the benefits they should have got because of the legislation. They voted Yes or no? Which one was the bad one? Uh, they voted uh, <laughs> yes on Proposition 22, which was a an attempt to change the law that had come in earlier in the year that basically was designed to stop um, rideshare companies primarily in like delivery app, like gig worker app uh, companies from s- essentially just ignoring or skirting um, California labor laws yeah. about contractor classifications. And actually, so you have to provide them benefits, basically, if they're full-time workers or equivalent to full-time workers. Yeah. And apparently the Biden-Harris regime <laughs> is already... Strong man, Joe what, Biden. One of their like, people is already talking about making a new labor position in the federal thing for like gig workers, um, <laughs> which is like, I think it was River, our lovely River, pointed out that K- Kamala's um, brother-in-law works at Uber. Oh, not just her brother-in-law. It's like her, her cousin, her daughter-in-law, yeah. her fucking, um, it's like a whole fucking crew of them and they're all like involved in like labor relations at Uber and Lyft and stuff like that. It's, yeah, it's, she is the child of this fucking milieu. We also voted this against is her. rent control again in California, right? Uh, or did that pass? I, I didn't see the final count okay. on that one yet. Okay. Well, either way, it's like, it shows that these red blue dichotomies don't mean like one's pro worker and one's the other. It shows the system's more complex and in many ways the Democrats no longer align with the interest of <laughs> like working people in right. so many ways. Well and and so Prop twenty two, I wanna talk a little bit about that and just say um Uber and Lyft and Postmates and shit like that spent I think two hundred million dollars in a very short amount of time. Yeah. On a local fucking state ballot issue. Um the 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 it was a very pervasive like FUD campaign mm-hmm. of like oh they're trying to like be unfair and like they could just say any dumb shit they wanted because they were just flooding the airwaves. If you opened um any like food delivery or rideshare app in California in the weeks leading up to the election, it had all these buttons saying I support Prop 22, yes, in order to like even order a fucking ride and shit like that. <laughs> um, and the resistance to that, right, was sort of a loose coalition of um, the people who had been involved in advocating for the original law change that Prop 22 was seeking to circumvent. Mm-hmm. Basically that saying like proper proper employment classification for gig workers, full-time gig workers. Um and some trade unions and a usual set of sort of rabble rousers and um, some, some you know, rent crowd politicians or whatever. Like, it, it was not like a particularly unified front, but I think it was plenty of people who were like, holy shit, multi-billion dollar publicly traded companies uh, just trying to like buy their way out of legal compliance mm-hmm. are pretty bad. Right. Um, <laughs> and many people found that horrifying for many reasons. I wouldn't say there was a coherent left position on it, per se. I mean, or rather, sorry, there was a correct left position on it, but I wouldn't even say the the left, speaking broadly of California, were, like, really part of it. It's just, like, no. it was a very, like, shock and awe campaign. I've got to say, I was pretty stunned by this issue sort of appeared or made its signature rounds on the ballot. They qualified for the ballot pretty late, during mm-hmm. a pandemic anyway, 
and then like holy shit the barrage <laughs> started of like text calls the apps app all the apps shit through mail it was just a, a wall to wall and the fact that it won with what 52 percent, i think overall yeah is like yeah that sucks but um holy shit <laughs> like uh-huh. that was just these companies burning money in desperation to protect profits right um so yeah disappointing for sure but also you know i think th- thanks thanks to everyone who was uh fighting back and we'll get it next time you know i honestly wasn't too surprised though if that result in california i think i mean we've talked about the prop system being just garbage but i think a lot of the petty bouge influence does play a big role in these elections and that's why things like rent control are making gig workers like employees of benefits is shot down so much easier than places like florida where like last election there was also a lot of progressive like left lane positions going for like felony voter rights and stuff like Mm -hmm. that in a place that we're told is like they're backwards and they're horrible. It's like, no, these people are the ones who are going to prison. They're the ones who need the, like the minimum wage was like, I think $10, like $8, something like that in fucking Florida. I think it was, wasn't much above federal minimum. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, these people are the ones who actually are mostly working class people. Well, and, and, and the, the, I guess my last thought on prop 22 is then to say it won because they managed to control the narrative and, and the narrative they were using to push this particular law was the drivers don't want this. Yeah. It's like, this is the drivers are worried they're going to lose their jobs. If um, they were basically threatening a capital strike for the record, Uber and Lyft and everything were saying, we're going to stop operating in California. Mm-hmm. Um, and so they were using that as a threat to load over drivers. The drivers and the driver apps had to opt in to saying that, yes, they support prop 22. Then Uber could turn around and say the majority of our drivers support Prop 22 because they're worried about their jobs with this this dangerous legal overreach. And so the thing is, honestly, if you are a person who is just trying to fill out this stupid 10,000-page California ballot, you read this argument and you've been bombarded with TV ads saying, you know, pictures of a, a beautiful multiracial working class coalition of smiling Uber drivers being like, I'm just worried about my job, you know, I just, I love driving for Uber and it gives me the freedom to see my children and to love America. Um, and everyone went, oh shit, yeah, this seems like something's kind of fucked with this. Um, they also don't love it. And I've talked to so many Uber drivers. <laughs> oh God, no. Especially like, I, there was a really funny one in wine country. I think, I think he was from like somewhere in like the Middle East kind of region. And he talked about how Saudi Arabia has a lot of like ownership of Uber now. Oh, he's it's like, huge! One of the biggest investors in and all. And he's Italy, like, yeah. I fucking hate it. And he was a Lyft driver actually. He used to be Uber, and he quit after like doing that. Yeah. Um, like, Uber's awful. I mean, so is Lyft. Like people might pretend. Oh, Lyft. Oh, I love. I love the idea. They think this is the one's better than the other. Yeah, like they, you're making an ethical stand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Uh. Yeah, just the front. I mean, I remember seeing ads of like this, like young like strong black woman like well if they do this then i'm gonna not be able to drive as much because we can't have as many drivers and all these things and it's like it's the same it's the libertarian like left that's kind of would buy into this for the same way of like the sex for him like well some people like it and don't agree with like this I'm like yeah but it's not about them it's about the real one, the ones doing this like as full time, the real precarity workers, right? All the displaced taxi drivers who are paying off a stupid fucking medallion still. This isn't for the people driving Tesla S's as Uber drivers, which right is a fun weekend gig, which I've like had. I'm like, if you own Tesla, you're not the person that's like doing this full time. It's their dad's Tesla. Um, <laughs> well, but yeah. And so anyway, I think the thing is against that backdrop, right, of a message where the narrative they were trying to control was the pro worker one. Yeah. Um, they they pulled in 52 percent so either the thing is that was unpersuasive to a lot right. of people or enough people saw through the bullshit or were just mistrustful of a, a, a set of companies that had literally threatened a capital strike they were like fuck it we'll just pick up our toys and leave we can afford it right um so you know anyway much much to uh you know continue to pick over and analyze and all of this but <laughs> I think we can all just say that, you know, 
I'm just so proud to have the first Italian American first lady in the U.S. She's Sicilian. I think we've been told you're Sicilian. <laughs> <laughs> I actually am Sicilian, but we also reject her as well. Ah, uh, yeah. Hey, Italian. She's, Italian representation matters. She's a fake Italian because no real Italian would work with queer eye for advertisement. <laughs> That's just the statement of all Italians. <laughs> um, um, well, speaking of uh, horrendous death cults that cause a, uh, you know, just irreparable psychological harm to people involved, <laughs> other than the Democratic Party. Yeah. Uh, I've been on a cult kick. Yeah, me too. We've yeah. been watching cult documentaries. Um, so I guess, <laughs> so it started off, I guess, um, you started watching the the Leah Remini Scientology. In the aftermath. Thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that was good. And I was watching, I was watching that with you. Then I um, started watching The Vow. Okay. Which is about this, the Nexium. Yeah. Um, was it at, 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 at what is it called? Executive success program. Mm -hmm. Multi-level marketing scam for like executive coaching, success win, kind of like just relentless self-improvement est type bullshit. And um, that turned out to just be like a sadistic sex cult as well. <laughs> um, but holy shit. And it's just been, I've just been just mainlining this shit. So I powered through a lot of the vow. And then we we switch out and watch some of Seduced as well, which is the yeah. other documentary on the Nexium cult. Yeah, um, I guess because two of these documentaries got made around the same time by two different sets of people, uh, and then the founder of Nexium just got uh, jail, like 120 years in jail for racketeering and trafficking, and and many of the women who helped. They're prosecuted on like sex trafficking and fraud and a bunch of things. Yeah, um, Rac racketeering, particularly for the fact that they were doing a lot of blackmailing or yeah. collecting, collecting collateral. Um. So anyway, it's just great. I I love this. I think I think the Biden era is going to be the era of like new age cults. It's going to be like the fucking eighties all over again. These are the people it's meant for, though, because I think like, when you watch these, they're not targeting the most disenfranchised in many ways they've been saying like I think seduced they're targeting those who have the desire to make the world better and those who have influence and power like the money <laughs> and money and the seduced one it's focused on her name's India and her mom's like an actress from what is the show called where they're like bitch bitch um dynasty her mom's a dynasty actress who's also like the daughter of um the princess of Yugoslavia and it's like she becomes part of this giant sex cult sorority where yeah. um, it just, it's, it's fucking mind blowing. Well, the, the funny thing is, um, so uh, the vow, which you haven't seen yeah. is a longer documentary. Okay. Yeah. I think it's like nine episodes and, and it's a slower burn. And so the funniest part is, um, so Mike uh, Vicente or whatever his name is, um, who was, one of the directors of the, that that um, new agey cult film, uh, "What the Bleep Do We Know," mm -hmm. was <laughs> um, got really really deep into it, and um, it's told. I think initially the first episode focuses on a woman who also sort of rose to the ranks, who learned about it because she went on a cruise, like a spiritualism cruise, where Mike Vicente was judging a like short spirituality film contest something i was just like oh my god these people are i can't think of a worse cruise to go on except maybe the nation cruise yeah <laughs> nation magazine does a cruise oh my god and i i've i've if unless we can get press passes in which case i'll definitely go yeah um, the, the nexium cult had a lot of really big name people just like scientology does which yeah. you probably i'm not going to mention scientology one because like you all probably know those names much more Tom Cruise, but um, Nexium had people like the Seagram heiresses, like the alcohol brand heiresses who massively funded and defended organization. I think one of them has spent, it's going to jail for like seven or 14 years or some shit like that. Um, the children of the former president of Mexico like got into Nexium and many people were like, oh, if you go to Mexico, like they will, like, people will hunt you down, like the media and suffer in the arms of this fucking group. Um, 
Jennifer Aniston has been to things, which I don't actually got very caught into. But like a lot of celebrities really got into like these early trainings where it's like self, it's all self improvement, and then it becomes like the multi level management thing. And once you get to a certain point, multi level marketing. Sorry, once you get to a certain point. It just like got really dark. And to, honestly, <laughs> well, if you were young, if you were like a young, hot, skinny girl. Yeah. Um, like, I think the thing. If you were Argo, I think you just have to keep doing slogging through your like uh, executive coaching stuff. Watching the seduce thing kind of felt like a sudden shock feeling, which I assume these people felt once they became part of a cult, where I'm like, wait, how the fuck did it change so quickly? Because like, even then I'm like, oh, it just like snapped instantly. I don't know where it changed. Um, well, and, and, um, so it's funny if you've seen, um, Century of the Self by, uh, Adam Curtis, it's a documentary series. Um, it's, he, he does a great job. I mean, it's written, produced years ago. Um, but all about the, like these sort of, uh, seventies California self-improvement kind of therapy, like therapeutic culture kind of things like Est was the big one, which is, um, okay. um, was S Eslin something seminar, something, something, um, which did a lot of this like kind of primal scream therapy and like breaking people down. It had all of this like, and it has evolved and evolved and evolved and evolved in things like the landmark forum, which a lot of companies will bring in as corporate trainers. Really? Yeah. And it's this weird overlap between that kind of relentless positivity culture of corporate America of just like, you've just got to be, just trying harder and it's just about your individual success. Yeah. We're all success, success. And, um, and so Nexium was just that a slightly creepier version of fairness. Cause like they refer to the founders Vanguard and he's this bizarre guy who, um, kind of looks a little bit like Steve Wozniak, like, <laughs> like kind of just sort of nerdy, nerdy guy. Um, whose self narratives were like, messianic nonsense like he's sort of you know like a gifted child who claimed to have like you know three degrees and be one of the smartest people in the world of course it's all nonsense but like yeah um it's funny to just watch these like people lap up his ability to kind of just produce this psycho babble nonsense that also had a lot of uh, shades of objectivism in it yeah I'm a big fan of ayn rand as well and it just all dovetails so nicely with an era of like your your success is your own and if you are failing in the world or if you're feeling alienated from the world that's just something you need to fix in you it's all you you just, you just need to use our our you know emotional modification tech yeah you know, it's all tech and algorithms as well we have a lot of algorithms for you know fixing your feelings well the best part was like they really early on in some of the trainings would do things like Oh, like kind of oh, very objective this, but like if you get raped, like it's your fault. Like it was basically like well, teaching, it's your fault for feeling bad about it. Yeah. They yeah. they basically would had like this whole like women's only thing where they made it like feminist brand, which is, you know, very like capitalistic, but like it's actually like hyper anti feminist. It's kind of reinforcing a patriarchal narrative as if it's like a liberatory thing and kind of preconditioning these women to become easy victims for sex trafficking for this one cycle leader <laughs> and whenever they had like issues they would go to these things called EM. ems which would basically were used to break them down and kind of like make them detached from these feelings which any well, that, this this was that was part of their mainline training that's the corporate training yeah but they would offering. do it later on as well well that's what i'm saying so they would yeah they would they would recycle exactly like oh you just you just need some like kind of hokum sort of sort of pop pop psychology behavior modification to feel better about the bad things that are happening to you right wow it's almost weird how that dovetails so nicely into uh you know, late capitalist alienation. <laughs> well, there's also like a really important new left connection to a lot of this thing where, well, for one, like the Nexium utilized the Dalai Lama very heavily mm -hmm. to build its reputation up, which if you know about new left history, the Tibetan Buddhism was used to help show people from a Marxist perspective to this new left kind of like individualist idea of like self-actualization and like 
they kind of like the secret shit. Like if you think it and feel it, it'll happen to you. Which is oh, like yeah, which a lot of them were into before they got into Nexium. Yeah. Um or like things like Scientology. There was an episode where they were entering things like the Nation of Islam and basically the Nation of Islam started pushing like Dianetics, which is their <laughs> like Scientology thing. I don't know how to explain it. Um, oh, Dianetics is a um I mean it's it's a it's a system of uh it's a it's it's tech religious technology, I believe what it's called. Yeah. And it's but yeah, it's a, it's a kind of another sort of pop psychology nonsense that purports to cure all all that ails you. Right. No matter what it is. Um and you see these sort of claims come through, right? I mean, so Scientology obviously at the intersection of its skepticism of not just sort of psychiatry particularly, but of actual mental illness in general. Is it rejected? Which is fun. Well, sort of. <laughs> That's the funny thing. So there are critiques of of a kind of medicalization of things like depression often, right? To say that yeah. maybe, you know, maybe depression is not just that your brain is wrong. Right. Maybe it's actually that the world is very, very wrong too, and you're not equipped to deal with just how wrong the world is. Yeah. Um and so, you know, that that critique, that's sort of, you know, Mark Fisher writes wonderfully about this um, and and others, but like something like Scientology actually fully embraces the idea that there's something wrong with you. <laughs> They're just saying you should pay us money to fix it. It's feet hands. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You just, you just have too many embedded fragments of uh, Atlantean warriors, trillion-year-old Atlantean warriors who are dedicated, detonated in volcanoes or whatever with uh thermonuclear weapons next team also did this of like <laughs> they're like brain scan things and i think there was like an experiment where they were making them watch horrific images people like being executed and stuff and yeah snuff film they shit. used actual doctors who became part of this like culty mlm like multi-level marketing system who luckily got their things rescinded like thank god um but it's like this is crazy. This is how dangerous like this kind of mindset is once you abandon materialism, when you just allow like, oh, it's all about me as an individual and it's all my fault. Like why I'm, it, it all pins it on you, which is what capitalism does and what like the new left kind of shit does. It's all connected. And I think anyone who's aware of like the new left history is like, well, of course people went to these things. Like Scientology emerged in the 1950s. That's when the New Left Project started. Like, as well as like, also like... I think of Jonestown, um, uh, People's we're, Temple. We're in San Francisco. One. Like the, the left, New Left was heavily connected to all of these cults in like California and stuff. And they didn't think it was back. They just had good ideas and they had good intentions. Right. And because, because that's, that's the funny thing, right? It's a utopian kind of vision of we all just want the world to be better. And by improving ourselves, we will improve the world. Right. Which is a totally, um, you know, it's a, it's a noble impulse people feel and I get it. However, <laughs> it, it also just leads you exactly into this kind of cult thinking and where that, that cultiness ends up being like objectivist fucking nonsense or sort of this psycho babble nonsense or literally just getting into like the very banal like HR, like you know corp like corporate HR story yeah. of like you just have to change the words you use and you'll be making the world a better place. Mm -hmm. um, or you know drink drink Pepsi instead of Coke and you're a better person and that'll fix the world. Like right, that'll fix what's wrong with you and and by fixing what's wrong with you, you'll fix what's wrong with the world. Well fuck off it's not how the world works <laughs> yeah and it's not how you work that's the sadder part and that's the that's the alienation they push they push on to people is saying gee well if 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 the world isn't getting better it's because you're not getting better right and if you're not getting better it's because there's something wrong with you well i say dear listener there's nothing wrong with you <laughs> right. the world the world is fucked you're fine <laughs> yeah well it's also like i think people are surprised by all these smart people being brought into cults and people don't understand like, oh, how could that happen? It doesn't make any sense. People are just stupid. But like even looking into like their basic like multi-level marketing thing, which both these cults have in common, 
Like I was part of one briefly for like a few months. Oh yeah, you said that. Um, I was part of. Can I say the name? Does that matter? Or? Yeah, go ahead. I was part of Melaleuca, which is um this like health and wellness like cleaning products and like food products and like fitness bars and vitamins, and it was like for one they pitched me. A friend was like, "Oh, come to like the cafe and like oh, it's always how it works." Out. And I didn't know what it was, and they like basically curiosity like, killed the twink. They introduced it and they're like, "Oh well." it's all like natural and it's good for the environment. And like, I'm like, I was a vegan. I was really into like all of this, like environmental like shit at the time. Sure. And I was like, Oh, this seems really cool. And the person who's like doing the presentation who brought us two other friends who were pitching to us was like, Oh, well I have this nice car and I have money now and I'm the same age as me. And I was like, Oh, I can make money and do all of these things. And then I was like, Oh, my mom's unemployed. Like, uh, maybe she'd want to do it. I pitch it to her, but it's like, oh, well, my mom can do it for you. And I'm like, oh, well, shouldn't she underneath me? And I'm like, well, no, because you're too new. And I'm like, oh, cause, but I would have made the money if it was underneath Yeah, me. yeah, of course. Um, Somebody's going to the wrong place. Well, my mom didn't do it, but I'm like, smart woman. And then I started realizing each month I actually didn't need as much of the products and stuff because they had a minimum you had to pay for each month. And it was like 70 plus dollars a month with no job for part of my college career. And then I tried to quit and it took me almost like three months to quit because the process was so difficult. There was no <laughs> online option to quit. There was no it's like easy... subscribing to the New York times. <laughs> it took me like a week to figure out how to actually find the part on the website that told me how to quit. I had to print it off, mail it. And then like, it's so like, Oh, four to six weeks and it'll be like removed. I'm like, I was like, this is fucking and you horrible. Pay your freeloader tax. I luckily helped other people like quit it, but it's like, if it was that easy for me to get that excited about being part of this big thing where I can make money and make like cleaning products and things better for everyone. It's like, Oh, this is so like, it makes so much sense. Like watching, I'm like, Oh fuck. Like, <laughs> well, yeah. So, so, um, yeah, that kind of in group compliance thing. This is always the thing, right? It's, it's selling a vision of hope. For people who don't have a lot, you know, you, you were a dirt poor college student and the idea that you could make some scratch, right. very appealing. And then it always, yeah, has to come with this hook of, and and through this, you will be making the world better. Mm-hmm. It's not you're being selfish because it's about, you know, we, we are taught we must sublimate our selfish urges into just our concern for an abstraction of humanity for the world. And then um, relies on this kind of strong in-group compliance. Yeah. A little bit like voting for Joe Biden, as it turns out. <laughs> you would all just have to get on board. Um, it's not about the fact that you will feel better about it. It's you just want it for other people. You just want the world to be better. And then the fact that every fucking other person is doing it makes you the weirdo if you stand up and say, no, I don't want to do this. Right. This is not good. <laughs> um, so, yeah, anyway, cults. There's also the fun thing. Um, <laughs> a lot of countries have been like, condemned by human rights orgs for trying to ban cultish groups like Scientology or Jehovah Witnesses or stuff. Um, human Rights Watch is a big one. Yeah. Like, um, places like Russia and stuff have banned or restricted things like Scientology and Jehovah Witnesses and stuff. All like new agey culty groups that really try to actually intercept politics and stuff yes. for power. Yeah, they're not apolitical at all. Yeah. And it's like, maybe there's something wrong here. Like, why would anyone, like, maybe this right to these belief things isn't the full picture when, like, maybe you could have a personal belief, like, as an organization, it's like, clearly there's something wrong in the fact we're still allowing these groups to operate. Like, Scientology basically owns an entire downtown of, like, Clearwater, Florida. Yeah. And there's endless people coming out saying, of these violence, just like Nexium, it didn't happen until like the celebrity's mom, like did a massive media campaign that they actually paid attention. Like these are only came relevant because of people of power and wealth being impacted, but all the poor people and stuff who were brought into these who were in massive debt, like they were all ignored for decades. And and Scientology still like they're getting denied, and it's like the FBI won't do anything. They're still a well, yeah. nonprofit. Well, yeah, and um. um I do like the the Aremini show where um, a lot of the people she's interviewing, right, are people 
who were kind of just like ordinary fucking people without a lot of extra money who like had credit cards, you know, opened in their names so they could take more Scientology seminars and shit like that. They told you to do that. Right. They, they did it for you. You yeah. just gave them the details. And they would do it for you. And these people just had their lives ruined. It's not this kind of like celebrity, like, oh my God, you know, after my starring role in ba- Battlestar Galactica, I decided to join an executive success coaching yeah. fucking like nonsense program that ended up in a sex cult, which, you know, fair enough, still human, you know, I, 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 fe- I feel for the humanity of those people too, but um, <laughs> it's, it's not, it's not actually the bread and butter of these people. They're, they're so interested in getting people like Tom Cruise into Scientology and keeping him there and treating him very well, mm-hmm. precisely because it rakes in the cash from the credulous morons who are like, well, if somebody successful like Tom Cruise is involved in this, then, you know, how bad could it be? Yeah, uh, or are, like you know, if Beyonce is, you know, doing uh, concerts for the Democratic Party, how bad could it be? Right. <laughs> I mean, people are also like, oh well, what about the Catholic Church? And I'm like, you can just leave the Catholic Church. Like, they're not gonna like come to your they do house. They not chase off to you. Like these people, like if you quit and start talking, they just like harass you and like will follow you for years. Like private PIs will follow yeah. you for years and go for your garbage and stuff. Like it's no because like. Cults do Try and frame frame people for crimes regularly. Like the whole thing of like doing like cult and religion. Like a religion starts as a cult, but once it becomes so big, it kind of stops being a cult. Like these are so new; they're still in the cult phase. They're <laughs> still like the most dangerous because they're small groups around a leader who still exists. Like Christians are not hanging around fucking Jesus anymore. <laughs> like they're they're not. They're just reading a fucking book, and that's there's definitely issues with that as well. But like. It's just like the leaders were still alive or like they have like cult leaders and it just, it's not the same. Like well, also, um, um, L. Ron Hubbard. I, so one of the fun facts I feel like I learned from, uh, from that leader of anything, cause I used to follow with all the like operation clam bake stuff. And, um, what some is that? Of, uh, this was like one of these very early internet sites that was like exposing Scientology. Mm. It was publishing a lot of their internal documentation at a time when like, the World Wide Web was not like that much of a thing many people had access to. Yeah. And they were some of the early, very early like internet copyright and censorship cases was they were like getting forced to take stuff down for copyright claim and stuff like that. <laughs> but um, one of the things I learned uh, from that documentary that I didn't know before is that <laughs> for people who die in Scientology, I guess beyond a certain level, I guess who are in the Sea Org, which is, you know, the, the sort of elite paramilitary part of like uh Scientology they um if you die you're given a 21 year leave of absence um from Sea Org <gasps> you're not you're not dismissed from Sea Org by death you're just your file is is stored yeah and then if somebody uh you're you're resurrected into a new into a new vessel um they have so, billion year contracts right yes yeah you've got a billion year contract with the church of Scientology but um the uh, <laughs> um <laughs> I but Elron Hubbard has been dead for more than twenty one years. I think he died in nineteen eighty six or something ish. Yeah, um, <laughs> and so uh, just want to talk about the fact that he's a wall from Sea Org. They still think he's coming back, though. Yes, he's still he's still got an office in every Scientology center, I believe. The current leader, I forgot David, his name, David Miscavige. Yeah, his wife randomly disappeared for like. E- if like she hasn't been seen in public since 2007. Yeah, and apparently the FBI said they oh they contacted her, but we don't know what that means. But there's a possibility that she might have been like pushing this idea that he the old leader is coming back, and he might have not liked that, and that's why he since pushed her into like solitary. Interesting. Like also like imagine like a system where like no one's seen this woman for like years, and they're like oh we found her and it's just <laughs> fine. It's like. What what about this makes it seem fine to you? Like well, that, that was what they did she, with Ron uh, L. Ron Hubbard as well. Like she can't leave. Like why yeah. why, why, why do you think no one's seen her? There's something wrong in there, and like maybe just like the laws are like just shitty in this country, which we learned in Seduced. They are much stronger and like coercive law in Europe and stuff. But it's like this is not ringing bells to anyone. Like why is no one doing anything against these groups? Well, no, no. So, so this is, this is the funny thing is there's a precedent within Scientology for this in terms of, um, so L. Ron Hubbard was not in the public eye for quite a long time because he was quite senile. He was an 
ill health. Yeah. And he was still the leader um, and still very powerful within, within the, the, the church, but, um, but was never seen in public. And, you know, I was just sort of trying to think like, what kind of hideous organization would have as its symbolic figurehead a completely senile old man with whom in whom they invest a sort of symbolic power and then keep sequestered away so that they don't libertarians. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I only said because Ron Paul is like very senile and he's still used for events as like wow. The way to step on my joke, Sam. Oh, are you going to say that? No. Oh, sorry. Wow. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, fuck <laughs> it. I'm going to start it again, <laughs> and I'm not editing this out. I'm just going to start the entire bit again. You're going to shut the fuck up. <laughs> what kind of organization would sequester a senile old man away from the public view so that his outrageous public statements wouldn't spook the, the rank and file and the flock? I don't know. And uh, did, <laughs> I'm going to start again. <laughs> and uh, it's Joe Biden, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> there it is. Got there. Um, yeah, That's are we at time? Yeah, I think so. I think we're at time. We're at time. Yeah, cool. Well, don't uh, join a cult, guys. <laughs> join the Twink Revolution multi-level marketing scheme. Uh, you just have to sign up five of your friends and you could be making um, ones of dollars a year from uh, membership dues. Love it. Yeah, we'll help you improve. We'll help you be your best revolutionary Twink self. <laughs> um, it might also be a sex cult. It's unclear. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be a gay fraternity turned sex cult. Perfect. Um, we got a few new articles out on twinkrev.com. Go check them out. If you would like to support our writers and our, our publishing empire, um, which is really just, you know, leading up to our religious technology center that will publish, um, you know, our, our future tech for emotional self-improvement, uh, patreon.com slash twinkrev is the place to go do that. And, uh, yeah. Anything else going on? Um, we got some more episodes coming up, some more good guests. Yeah, we're going on everyday analysis again, I think next That's, Wednesday. That is next Wednesday, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, wow. How time flies. We don't have the link yet, but we'll share it once we have it. Yeah. Um, Remember to order your turkeys now if you're in the U.S. and doing Thanksgiving, you know. Or if you're vegan, there. your tofurkeys. Go order your tofurkeys. Just, you know, we try and help you be better people. See, we're just about self-improvement for you yeah but if you fail it's your fault and you are responsible for everything <laughs> as our good mother says ayn rand um if anything bad happens to you that's because you wanted it <laughs> and with that thanks for joining us bye, bye. guys